So in sample problem number three, we are given with a journal bearing. So for journal bearing, the oil flow can be treated as a parallel flow between two large isothermal plates. These plates are maintained at a particular temperature and it doesn't change. So one plate moving at a constant velocity of 12 meters per second and the other plate is stationary. So the velocity at this point is zero and then the velocity at this point is 12 meter per second. Consider such a flow with a uniform spacing of 0.7 meter. So the spacing between them is between the two plates is 0.7 mm. The temperatures of the upper and lower plates are 40 degrees Celsius. So this one is 40 degrees Celsius. And the lower one is 15 degrees Celsius. By simplifying and solving the continuity, momentum, and energy equations, we determine the velocity and thermal distributions in the oil. Second, the maximum temperature and where this maximum temperature occurs. And third, the heat flux from the oil to each plate. So we wanted to get the heat flux for each plate. So our assumptions in solving these problems are, first is steady operating conditions. Oil is incompressible, so we can use a density, a constant density. Body forces such as gravity are negligible. Plates are large so that there is no variation in the Z direction. So we will only consider the flow direction as well as the Y direction. So the properties of oil, so looking at the table, so for oil, engine oil this is where we get the properties so we're given with temperatures of 40 degrees Celsius and 15 degrees Celsius so we have to create or make or solve the film temperature first for us to be able to get the values of the properties so the film temperature will be the average of this temperature so that's 27.5 degrees Celsius. If you are going to look at the table, we don't have 27.5. So it's between 20 and 40. So we interpolate between 20 and 40. And by doing interpolation, we arrive with a K of the oil as 0.145 and 0.605 as our dynamic viscosity of the oil. So the problem wanted us to solve for the velocity as well as the thermal temperature distribution by solving continuity momentum and energy equation. So for this problem, our flow direction is towards the x-axis. As you can see, the flow of the oil is towards that direction. And then y is to be the normal direction. So this is our y. So this is along the length or the separation between the two plates. Since this is a parallel flow between two plates, thus that the velocity is equals to zero. The normal distribution of our velocity, which is this, this particular part here, this V here is equals to zero since the direction of flow is towards this direction. That's why our continuity equation from the previous slides, if you're going to check the continuity equation, we can cancel out this term here leaving us with this value. And then solving for the value of the velocity, mu, our velocity therefore is just a function of y. So meaning the velocity changes along 
the distance from where x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 2L. That's why we have this value. Therefore, the x component of the velocity does not change in the flow direction. So, since it will not change, this velocity profile, as you can see here, will be the same at this point or at even at this point. So, it will, it is the same. Noting that as we solved velocity as a function of y and velocity is equal to 0 and then our the flow motion is not because of pressure difference but because uh, we do not consider this one as part of the we do not consider pressure gradient the flow is merely because of the uh, motion of the upper plate rather than pressure gradient that's why for the x momentum we can cancel out this term as well as this particular term here that is why we reduced with this particular term and then solving for that dif that uh, partial differential equation then we can solve for uh, we can convert it to this form so the derive second derivative of our velocity over dy squared so this is a second order differential equation so using your knowledge on differential equation, we integrate this one twice. So upon integration twice, we will obtain two constant, arbitrary constants. So our velocity in, uh, in along the, the y direction is a function of c1y plus c2. So we need to solve for c2 and c1. So in order to solve that, we need to have our boundary conditions so if you are going to look at our illustration the velocity at point zero at this point is zero because this plate is stationary and the velocity at point where y is equals to l is equals to our 12 meter per second so that's y which is also our v so applying the those values in this equation that we can solve for the velocity distribution which is y over l times the velocity so using this equation we can solve for the velocity at a particular point for example we wanted to find the velocity at this point here so meaning you sub when y is equals to zero so the velocity is zero. So when y is equals to L, 12 meter per second, so we can also solve for the value of the velocity. So that's what the distribution means. Frictional heating due to viscous dissipation in this case is significant because of high viscosity of the oil and the large plate velocity. The plates are isothermal, this is given, and there is no change in the flow direction. And thus, the temperature depends only on, on y, on its distance from, because the upper plate is high at higher temperature, so temperature is dependent on its direction in the y. So that's why temperature is a function of temperature at the y direction. And taking note our previous results, then our energy equation, so this is our energy equation, Taking note that partial derivative of velocity over par, uh, with respect to y, that is already solved as v over l. And then substituting the values, so we, that's why our energy equation will be reduced to this form. Dividing both sides by k and then integrating twice. So by integrating twice, we will arrive with the value, the temperature distribution as a function of its distance along the normal, along the y-axis. So still, we have two arbitrary constants here, C3 and C4. So applying the boundary conditions, 
the temperature at point zero is T1, that is 15, and then the temperature at a point L, that is T2, that is 40. So the temperature distribution as in a form of equation can be written as this way. So this is important because we can determine the temperature along the, the length in the normal direction. The temperature gradient is determined by differentiating the equation that we previously uh, have with respect to, to y. Differentiating this equation with respect to y, we can get the temperature gradient as T2 minus T1 over L plus mu V squared over 2KL times the quantity of 1 minus 2Y over L. This is important because later on we will use this in solving for the point wherein we can get the maximum temperatures. So the location of the maximum temperature, if you can still recall maxima and minima, when we set our um, this ratio, this differential into zero, we can get for the maximum value of at the point we're in the value of y where we can get the maximum temperature. It's the same concept, maxima and minima. And in doing that, we can get the maximum, the point, wherein we can get the maximum temperature. Substituting all the values of L, K, T to T1, mu V squared, we can get the value of the maximum temperature at 0.3791 mm. So this is the point along, so since this one is 0.7, so it is uh, somewhere in the middle, 0.371 and is somewhere here. So from our lower plate. So 0.3791 mm from the lower plate where we can get the maximum temperature. So the maximum temperature, substituting for that value of y in our temperature in this equation as a function of y, since we already have y, that's 0 0.37, 37, substituting that value here in this equation, we can get the maximum temperature, the T max at 103.1 degree Celsius. For the heat flux, so the heat flux can be determined using the definition of heat flux, but this time we substitute for the temperature distribution, thermal gradient that we get. This is our temperature thermal gradient. We just substitute these values to that equation. So substituting the values, so as you can see, we just plug in the equation here and then simplify it. And then since at a point at the lower plate, so this is for the lower plate, the distance is zero. So we substitute for y over l, so as you can see here, we have y over l. Since y is zero, so this part will become zero. Two times zero is zero, that's why we have we have zero here. Then substitute the value so we can get the heat flux at the lower plate. For the higher plate, since y is equal to L, so if we're going to substitute L here, so L over L, that will become, that's why we have two. So that is the reason that we have two here. And then substituting the rest of the values, that's why we have this heat flux. So that's how we solve sample problem number Three.